Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, a star flying across the galaxy, a rare sight in the sky, Dilophosaurus receives an update and lots more paleontology news. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society has revealed an observation of a star that has been launched across the galaxy after its supernova failed to tear it apart. The star in question is a white dwarf star and is believed to have been a part of a binary star system before the explosion, which would have sent the other star hurtling across the galaxy in the opposite direction. All of this has been concluded after information, some of which from the Hubble Space Telescope, about the star's velocity and composition. For example, it seems clear that there was only a partial supernova because nothing heavier than iron, inclusive, was detected in the star, and all of these elements are only formed after the star fully collapses into a supernova. In other news, the comet Neowise has been captured by many photographers across the UK, including Ben, as it illuminates the night sky over Britain this month. It is one of the few comets to be seen with just the naked eye as it flies past the Sun, coming closest to the Earth on the 23rd of July. It's a beautiful sight, with its trademark comet tail marking its journey as the heat of the Sun rips off its surface layers, leaving a trail behind. Next up, an interesting new paper was published this week, which has reported an almost complete fossil skeleton of a large dolphin from the Oligocene of South Carolina. A new genus has been given to this animal, Ankylorhiza, and it appears to have been a macroraptorial predator that occupied a similar niche to an orca. Interestingly, certain aspects of anatomy revealed by the well-preserved skeleton show how the stepwise evolution of locomotion in these animals occurred, and has also shown that several specialised adaptations in modern tooth and baleen whales actually convergently evolved with each other. But now over to and now over to Ben, with lots of paleontology news. Thanks, Doug. Well, there are some weeks where everything just happens at once, and it's been one of those again. We have loads of amazing dinosaur news, so let's get started. First, a huge paper was published recently that changed the way we see the iconic dinosaur Dilophosaurus. This immense publication evaluated the anatomy and phylogeny of the dinosaur and described several new specimens, greatly improving our understanding of this animal. One of the most significant discoveries is that the crests were actually bigger than previously thought, concave inwards and reinforced by honeycomb bone structure. It's even been speculated that they may have supported an inflatable soft tissue display feature. I'd recommend watching Edge's video for an excellent and more in-depth breakdown of this new discovery. Also in the news is the description of a new genus and species of Alvarez saw, Trirarchuncus prairiensis. This new taxon comes from the uppermost Maastrichtian Hell Creek formation of Montana, and is, therefore, the youngest known Alvarez saw so far found, living right at the end of the Cretaceous. The fossils known of this dinosaur include material from the hand and lower arm, and form a growth series of multiple individuals, helping paleontologists to better understand the ontogeny of this bizarre grouping of dinosaurs. The next new dinosaur from this week is a Carcharodontosaurian named Lucivenator santosi, from late Jurassic aged rocks in Portugal. This animal has been placed as an early diverging member of the group due to the unique characteristics it displays, and is the oldest Carcharodontosaurian so far known from Laurasia. Additionally, it confirms that the Carcharodontosaur clade originated before the Cretaceous period, and adds to the diversity of large theropods known from the late Jurassic of the Iberian Peninsula. And finally, a new Scylorosaurian theropod was described this week too. Named Aratosaurus musea nationale, this species was found in lower Cretaceous rocks in northeast Brazil, and is based on an incomplete right hind limb. Aratosaurus was found to be closely related to Zuo Long from the late Jurassic of China, and forms a basal Scylorosaur lineage, suggesting that such animals were widespread around the globe during the early Cretaceous. Well, that's it for the action-packed paleo news for this week. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed Seven Days of Science, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.